Pharmacy Pearls, drug therapy that works. Cold FX or CVT002 is a natural health product derived from North American ginseng that is marketed for the prevention of colds and flu. In this edition of Pharmacy Pearls, we'll take a closer look at the evidence to see if the product is really all it's cracked up to be. Let's start by viewing a commercial showcasing the purported benefits of cold FX. Our body has a natural capacity to heal itself, but sometimes it needs our help. Cold Effects is the only natural health product clinically proven to boost our immune system, reducing the duration, severity, and frequency of cold and flu symptoms. It's naturally sourced, and you can use it daily for symptom relief. Also, it's Canada's number one doctor and pharmacist recommended natural cold remedy brand. So trust Cold Effects, because it not only works, it's clinically proven to work. Not so fast, friendly doctor impersonator. Before we take your word for it, let's examine the existing clinical evidence. For reference, the following is based on an excellent analysis appearing in Tools for Practice, an initiative sponsored by the Alberta College of Family Physicians. It was first published in 2011 and reviewed again in 2015. To view it in further detail, visit bit.ly slash coldfx. First of all, the highest quality evidence surrounding cold FX comes from five randomized controlled trials, which appeared in four separate publications. In one study, 783 patients, aged 65 or older, were randomly assigned either placebo or cold FX at 400 or 800 mg per day for six months during flu season. A modified intention to treat analysis by researchers found no statistical difference in either clinical or laboratory confirmed colds and flu. In an intention to treat analysis, data is analyzed according to the groups to which patients were originally randomized, regardless of whether they actually received or adhered to treatment. This practice serves to avoid introducing bias brought about by the non-random loss of participants. For this reason, intention to treat analysis is preferred when comparing the effectiveness of treatments. In the same study, a subsequent per-protocol analysis showed that two of eight outcomes were statistically significantly improved with cold FX, while another two were borderline. In a per-protocol analysis, the treatment comparison is restricted to ideal patients who adhere perfectly to the clinical trial instructions. This method of analysis has the potential to introduce bias into the study, thereby undermining the validity of results as well as the conclusions that can be drawn from them. For this reason, a per-protocol analysis is not recommended when comparing effectiveness. Another study combined the results of two non-statistically significant trials involving seniors living in nursing homes. It involved 89 and 109 patients and compared placebo with 400 milligrams of cold FX. It found a statistical difference in laboratory-confirmed colds and flu, but no clinical difference. Importantly, the meaningful outcome here is the occurrence of a symptomatic cold or flu, for which there was no discernible benefit. Laboratory-confirmed cold and flu, on the other hand, is a surrogate or substitute endpoint. Similarly, serum cholesterol changes would be a surrogate endpoint for the clinically meaningful outcome of heart attack or mortality rate changes. Surrogate endpoints are only useful insofar as they reflect what actually matters to us. In this case, it doesn't. Continuing on, the next study involved 323 patients, although only 279 were analyzed, between the ages of 18 and 65, all of whom had not received a flu shot. It showed that there were 0.25 fewer colds or flu per person over four months in patients using cold FX 400 mg per day. So, for every four people who took 400 mg of cold FX daily for four months versus four who didn't, there was one less instance of cold or flu. Of concern, however, 
Over 10% of the population in this study dropped out before even taking a single dose. In the final study, 43 community dwelling patients aged 65 and older were randomized to receive placebo or 400 mg per day of cold FX. Surprisingly, it did not look at the occurrence of either clinical or laboratory cold and flu. It also appeared to arbitrarily select certain time frames for analysis in order to obtain statistically significant differences in symptoms. This, as you can imagine, is a red flag. Ultimately, it is clear that studies of cold FX are plagued by many concerns. For one thing, the results are altogether inconsistent. Also, the use of per-protocol analysis, combining the results of separate trials, performing multiple analyses, and cherry-picking time frames all serve to modify the analysis of data in order to achieve statistically significant differences. Additionally, substantial dropout rates and the emphasis on surrogate endpoints versus clinical outcomes lead one to question the validity of the research. Not to mention, all of these studies were industry-funded, meaning study sponsors had a financial incentive to obtain positive results. The bottom line, when it comes to colds and flu, don't trust cold FX. It's more likely to boost your money than your immune system. Thanks for watching. For more Pharmacy Pearls, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.